The Country Life Cookery Book was published in 1937 and illustrated by Eric Revelius. Country Life to some may just be a magazine, but at this point they were a major publisher about architecture, craft and style of country life that would appeal to the new middle and upper classes of Britain. In the same year as the cookery book was published, they also published Where to Catch Salmon and Trout, Elements of Stabling, Morning Flight and Victorian Street Ballads. For children there were The Golden Knight and Other Stories and Raj the Elephant. These were all part of the Junior Country Life Library. The books are countryside propaganda in the age of train travel, omnibus and car. They are promoting a Britain in the way that they wanted to see it, and it is fair to say that when people talk about the golden 1930s, that country life had a great deal in that legend. We know Eric Revillius got the commission for the cookery books in July 1936 as he wrote a letter to Helen Binion. The wood engravings follow a seasonal theme, with this calendar style it would mimic the Ambrose Heath books for Faber and Faber that Edward Borden had illustrated in the previous five years. Only 12 blocks were cut by Revillius for the book, so with the title page decoration, January and December used the same image. He worked on the illustrations from July 1936 to February 1937, while taking other commissions for work and finishing a series of watercolours. Here is the title page wood engraving, a framed cornucopia with a wheat sheaf and food produce all around. At the same time, Revillius was completing a commission for the Cornhill magazine, and the projects overlapped with the cookery book, so that when one wood engraving was rejected by the Cornhill, he used it again on the cookery book. The difference between the illustration Eric Revillius used for the Cornhill magazine and for this cookery book is that he cut away the framed edging. I always thought that this wood engraving was a bit surreal and over the top until I discovered that there was a drawing of it too. In a letter to Helen Binion, Eric Revillius wrote, I've been drawing the bread table in the church, dead and fancy loaves, barley and corn, apples and eggs, I thought it too beautiful not to place on record. Here you can see another woodblock Eric Revillius made of more or less the same image. It was used for the writings of Gilbert White of Selborne in 1938 and shows how he would recycle his work. January and December is the wood engraving that was used twice in the cookery book. Revillius would always find inspiration in the past. He owned a copy of The Frugal Housewife published by J. Fairburn in 1838. And here is the image. The illustration is a meat guide on animals. Edbury. In August 1935, Edward Borden and Eric Revillius went on a painting trip to New Haven, and the wood engraving here has New Haven embroidered onto the basket, as well as the boat in the end of the harbour. You can also find the same image in colour and much larger for contemporary lithographs. The print that Eric Revillius did for contemporary lithographs he called a homage to Surat. You can also see the lighthouse in this watercolour, Eric Revillius, New Haven Harbour, 1935. Here you can see that Eric Revillius has divided up the animals into body parts again. The pig is surrounded by the fruit of choice, apples, and to the left of the wood engraving is a sieve with berries upon it. And you can see that sieve with a tea towel upon it here in this watercolour that apparently is now lost. Here is a sheep, and again it's been divided up into animal parts. And you can see a jar of mint beside. In the trug are some berries. Again, you can see the same trug in this watercolour next to the sieve. As I mentioned earlier, the cookery book came at the same time as the Cornhill Commission, and here you can see the wood engraving used for the compliment slip for the Cornhill magazine. It features trugs, a cornucopia, and also the sieve full of berries. May. This wood engraving appears to be one of the most original works made for the book. It has no elements I can find from another work. The June illustration features a beehive on a variation of an image that would be used two years later on the garden implements jug that Eric Revillius designed for Wedgwood. Here is the jug, and right at the bottom you can see the design for the beehives. This wood engraving for July has roots in many different places. The finished woodblock here has a hat and a cornucopia with pears beside it and bread. In the planned pencil drawing you can see that Eric Revillius was planning to use a harvest theme, but unfortunately he'd used this idea once before, in 1934 for the many Kerwin Press stock blocks. These are woodblocks that the press paid artists to make so they could be used without permission and really like a form of clip art. 
and you can see how it's been used on this book cover, Spectator Harvest, recent articles and poems from The Spectator, in 1952. The works that Eric Revillius and his contemporaries made would be used again and again from the Cohen Press. You can see that Eric Revillius recut this image in mirror form for Gilbert White Selborne in 1938. The trees are slightly different, but the feel of the work is the same. It shows that Eric Revillius would constantly go back and copy his work. He was so busy that he couldn't come up with original ideas all the time and just recycled them from project to project. But back to the cookery book, you can see that cornucopia with pears was again the same one used for the Cornhill magazine compliment slip. For the August vignette, Revillius chose to illustrate the garden of Brickhouse in Great Bardfield. Revillius and his wife Terza shared the house with Edward Borden and his wife Charlotte from 1932 to 1935 when the Revilliuses moved to Castle Headingham. In 1936, Edward Borden painted a view of the garden where you can see the same elements that appear in the cookery book. The pagoda to the left was a gift from the Revilliuses to the Bortons when they got married. Here is a painting that Eric Revillius made called The Garden Path in 1933, again featuring the pagoda. And here is the drawing Eric Revillius made for the woodblock. The illustration for September shows the game shooting season and a brace of birds, maybe geese or pheasants. You can see a country lane going off one side and a gate barring the way on the other. Here is the original drawing. Fans of Eric Revillius may also recognise it from the Green Line advertisements. You can see the same gate here to the right and also a path up to the left, with a shepherd guiding the sheep. October sees kitchen items, a jug, copper jelly mould, stacked mixing bowls and baking trays with two jars of preserved items. The same wood engraving appeared on the dust jacket of the cookery book. This is the last wood engraving original in the book, as December was also used for January. And here you can see a turkey, seasonal food, in a chicken farm. <laughs>